So what's going to end up happening is your VO2 score on the fly is going to show up on the left panel there. Your heart rate's above it. Um, then the data is going to start flowing. And you're going to see some of the similar things we've discussed. The oxygen uptake versus carbon dioxide production. And the new thing is going to be your heart rate. Um, and I have like nine different panels down there that I can draw from to get different information. Uh, which we'll discuss as we get going. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you sometimes you're able to just kind of yeah, but it's it's really unless you're really beat down, it's not likely to be that different. So I've had occasion where I work with athletes where they've had big workouts. And they were concerned that they may not perform. And I would tell them that I would see that they're being hindered by the way the data is coming up. And if, it, if in fact it was not working out, we just scuttle the mission and do it another day. But I don't, you know, it sounds to me like you're, you're going to be okay. And your utilization of fat is really awesome. It's about 70% fat use from it. values, your heart rate, relative to oxygen uptake, relative to carbon dioxide production. And as you see here, this is time on the bottom. And for the first two minutes we were walking, so pretty steady state, heart rate was probably about 80 beats per minute. And then here's where I'd cause you to start running. And then your heart rate jumped way up all of a sudden. And then you can see this wide berth between the green and the red, which means you really got aerobic. So this right in here was really sweet. Um, and the lines here about 120 beats per minute, still really aerobic. Your heart rate, top end heart rate is not huge, which is good, which is suggesting that you probably have very efficient cardiac output. You don't need to see those big heart rates to get the job done. So think of it like, um, what was the highest it got on that? I think that we were punching up for a little over 160 beats per minute. And I'll bet you that outside, real time, you could probably hit 170 if you really pushed on it. Right. I generally don't see the type of heart rates in this environment that you might see outside. But what's really critical is this here. This is that turn point where the lines intersected and now you're completely into your sugar store. And that happened, by the way, at about 140 beats per minute. So before that, you're bur burning way more, pretty much fat. Exactly right. And so you were, I'll show you the, the data here. We're going to mess with this. Um, this blue line represents what's referred to as the aerobic threshold. The green line represents the anaerobic threshold. Now, this is the computer default, and we're not going to go with that. I, I think that that's a little too conservative. Your favorite station. But let's do this. Let's adjust this line and bring it up to right about, let's see, right about here. Now, um, if you look over on the left here, the low end heart rate was 132 beats per minute. 
But look at the calories expended, 1,069 per hour. At 100, and that's, that's a pretty good indication that you're pretty efficient because you're moving a lot of calories even though your heart rate's not that high. And the good news is that even though the heart rate or the cost of work is high, the economy is good because you're at 66.6% .6 fat utilization at that point. So you're really only talking about 400 calories an hour that are going away that matter. The rest are being spared. You see that? Yeah. And then if I bring you up just uh, nine beats per minute, 141, the caloric expense is now 1,211, but half of that's being spared. So you've just gone to about 600 calories an hour. Now, the real interesting part is this. If I pull you up to here, that's 100% sugar utilization, and that happened at 157 beats per minute. So now, those extra 20, or yeah, about 17, 16 beats per minute, puts you in at 1,561 calories an hour, and you're using every, every drop bit of it. is sugar, which is clearly not sustainable. Right. You're not. Gonna, you might be able to, if you were 100% rested, topped off, you might pull this off for an hour. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's not going to happen. And a top end of the test, incidentally, was 159 beats per minute, 1,637 beats uh, calories per hour. Fitness then, level superior. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you blew, uh, it says 67.9, but I'm going to go to the raw data, and the raw data is going to tell the tale. Um, Let's see, 69.2, 69.2 VO2 score. This much more would have got a 70, man. 70 is like home run bill. Huge. Is, is it? So, where, where, where's like the sweet spot, like in the VO2 max? Well, what I tell people all the time, and it's kind of funny because now that people have heard me say it a lot, when they come in here, they, they repeat it. I tell them that uh, you're in the ballpark if you're over 50. You're in the club when you're over 60. Gotcha. You got it? Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah. being in the ballpark is one thing, being in the club is a whole other thing. Are there most endurance athletes? Do you see a lot of them above 70? There isn't a lot of anybody above 70. Okay? Gotcha. Uh, you can see it in professional cycling, you can see it in professional marathoning, but I can tell you that world beaters get up in the 70 range, 75 ish, and rare, rare, rare occasion where you see a guy get up in the 80s. Good stuff. Yep. So I purposely shut the music off because I want this message to be clear. And you brought it to light a moment ago that just a, just a little bit of difference in heart rate response yields a big difference in cost. So as we suggested earlier, when I go back to this screen, we're looking at 157 beats per minute, 1,561 calories per hour, every drop of that coming from sugar. This is not sustainable. This is not something you can do for a very long time. And if I just bring it down, let's bring it down to here. 146 beats per minute, now you're sparing 32.5% of that energy. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's that's you sparing over 300 calories per hour simply because you were off by 10 beats. 10 beats per minute made a big difference. Your perception of your effort, let's just say that you went out fresh and you're 20 minutes into a run and you're punching up on that 155, 160 beats per minute. Your perception of that effort is that you feel okay, you can do this. In 10 minutes from that point, Right. That's all going to change. Right. And so if you are just developing your pace relative to your perception, you could be digging yourself a hole Absolutely. that you weren't even aware of. And, and it, it come back and bite you on the ass later. Right. Where, incidentally, if I took you here, let's just take you right here. Five beats different. Five beats different. Now you're sparing half of the energy. 
Now you're only spending 600 calories per hour from your sugar stores, where a moment ago you were well over 1,000 calories per hour. This is the difference of you being able to sustain that work for another hour. Yeah. This is the guy, the guy ahead of you that was pushing on it, started walking mm -hmm. as you just started to run past him. And then when you get to the place where you smell the barn and you're going to push, you still have a little reserve that you can use. And I think that's you know a mistake that a lot of us make, you know myself included. Maybe the excitement of the race, you end up pushing that high heart rate too soon, and like you just said, you dig yourself a hole, and it. it's it's tough to come out of that. But if you kind of just stay right below it, you're able to sustain it longer, and you'll end up passing that other version of yourself that yeah maybe went out too right. Hot. Well, and you know what? You see evidence of it in the races, yes. where some of the more savvy athletes are laying back. For example, he laid back. Yeah. And you got guys that are blowing their quads out. Not only, if you just get off the energy for a minute and think in terms of the lactate production. So this lactic acid is really just insidious. It's starting to get into muscles and it's starting to shut muscle function down. So you're pushing, you're, you still have the energy to give yourself effort, but your, your legs are punch drunk. They can't perform anymore. And you're asking yourself, what the hell? My legs aren't working, and, you know, but your heart rate keeps going up. Because you really still have the energy to do it, but your body's just toxic. It just can't function. Makes sense. It's